Ashley Eckstein, voice of Ahsoka Tano on Star Wars The Clone Wars, and I follow the nerd. Hi, I'm Billy D. Williams, and I'm following the nerd. Hello, Ghostbusters. You do? You have? No kidding. Guys, these people are following the nerd. Although, why they rang me to tell me is a bit of a mystery. Seems like some kind of clunky shout-out for a radio show. Hmm. I'm not actually Janine Melnitz, you know. I'm Laura Summer, the voice artist who played her. Seriously, how do these nerds keep getting my number? This is Anthony and Gruber. Nerds. I hate these guys. I'm Maisie Williams, I play Arya Stark in Game of Thrones, and I'm following the nerd. It feels like forever since we've done this. And weirdly feels like five months ago. Like only yesterday. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a new studio, it's a new setup, it's the same old faces, the same old names, the same old voices. The same old voices, yeah. Faces not so much. Maybe this change. is radio, you Maybe know. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I can see you're, you're, you've kind of slacked off a wee bit here. You're a bit ropey on it, you know. It's been three years, but we are back. We are. I'm to inflict ourselves upon your ears. This is, it's almost three years to the night. Yeah, I think it was about the 15th of August 2015 was our our final farewell show where we had all the old crew back in again and tried and failed to stream it live. And here we are three years later still with the same problems. That's unreal. You know, like <laughs> three years. Three years. Okay, now, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm Mark. I'm Saxon. And this is the following The Nerd Show. Uh, we used to be a big part of a radio station a few years ago. We were a pretty big show. We went off air for a few years. Yeah. And due to, to uh, you know, to the fan demand. Yeah, we, we had to bring it back. You know, I mean, there were petitions, everything, trying to keep us off the air. We ignored those and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we're we a big entertainment show. This is kind of what we do. Our, our website is followingthenerd.com. We're all about movies and TV shows and everything else. And uh, tonight we have a big interview. Um, it was one that we, we, we hoped to get uh, for a long, long time. Um, and it's with a guy called Paul Feig. If you don't know who that is, he was the writer and director of Ghostbusters Answer the Call, which came out just over two years ago. Uh, and we're going to be playing that in a little while. So we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a really good interview because, you know, I think it's fair to say Ghostbusters wasn't met with the warmest of receptions. It wasn't. I think it's also fair to say it's not necessarily an interview. It's more like a conversation. It's a conversation. As, as you so rightly put it, it's a conversation between three massive nerds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One just so happened to have directed the very divisive Ghostbusters movie. And we sat down with him. No agendas, no politics here. Just tell us your side of the story. And it is a fascinating lesson. It really is. If I say so myself. He does get into it. I mean, you know, we, what we wanted to talk about was there was a lot of negative response to Ghostbusters when it came out. Um, uh, you know, the likes of myself and Saxon, you know, I know you're on the same uh, page here with me. We, we didn't care who was cast. I mean, obviously we cared. We wanted good actors in the roles. Yeah, yeah. But our problem was never about it being a female-led movie. I'd say if I hear that one more time. Yeah. I may have to do something horrible. Yeah. I, I'm sick to death of, of, of hearing that. Yeah. I mean, it's been two years now. It just seems like you have to defend it all the time, though, doesn't it? I mean, it does. You know, we, we, we unfortunately got sort of shoveled into the same uh, category. Anybody that didn't like the movie or had issues with the movie, you know, the problem was always that he rebooted the universe. He got rid of everything that had gone before. He started again. Um, and then when the movie came out, I'd be the first to admit it, I. I I didn't hear it. I yeah, kind of liked it. There was a couple of jokes in there that like uh, that, that got me. You know, they got me in the right sort of way, and like I was genuinely laughing almost, you know, in spite of myself. Yeah. Um, but we we're going to play that in a few minutes. Come here, tell me this and tell me no more. Okay. Right? We miss so much stuff. We have missed a world of things. Um, but, like I mean, it's three years. I mean, that's what like a million years when it comes to nerd culture. It really is. And it's just it's moving so quickly now. The landscape. I think the landscape is very different now. It is, and I I personally blame. This, this whole outrage culture that we have now, mm-hmm. where it's, it's sort of bleeding into everything. 
especially to do with uh, nerd culture, and obviously Ghostbusters was a big part of that. Uh, it's it's gotten to the stage now where it's now involving Star Wars as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these, th- these are just fun, nerdy little bits of escapism, and all of a sudden it's the most serious, most important thing in the world now. Yeah, I mean, oh, I'm just knocking that mic off. I mean, the word that we keep hearing is toxic, and it has become very, very toxic. I mean, you know, there used to be the times where, you know, you'd like a movie, your friend wouldn't like a movie. Uh, you know, you'd like this character, your friend wouldn't like it, vice versa. And it was just, it was a thing. You know, yeah. it was just a thing. Um, but now it's like, oh, how dare you not have the same yeah. opinion as me? But, like, even with the connotation of that, it's, <coughs> if, oh, oh, hang on a minute, you didn't like that. You're a racist. Yeah. You didn't like that. You're a sexist. You yeah. didn't like this. You're a misogynist. And it's, guys, yeah. it's just, it's fantasy. It's escapism. What is wrong with you as people? Yeah, it's guys that catch ghosts. It's laser swords. It's spaceships. It's time travel. Let's, everybody just relax. Just yeah. relax. Just relax. Now, one of the biggest stories that we have, because um, I know, Saxon, as I said, I was on, on holiday um, and I dropped you a wee message today just to look over some of the big stuff that we missed over the last couple of years. Yeah. And one of the biggest stories... Um, has to be the fact that uh, I think it's coming back next month, but we're getting I've, Doctor Who. I've heard October, October for Doctor Who. But yeah, of course, you're referring to the story that uh, the 13th Doctor is played by Jodie Whittaker, which yes. is a woman. A woman. A woman as a doctor. In, My goodness. In the time machine. Like, I, I love that. Like the, the internet basically reacted like it was the 18th century. A woman can't be a doctor. Are you <laughs> mad? <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, and it, it's... Again, it was this thing where, oh my god, if you didn't like this, you're a troll, you're this, you're that, you're the yeah. other. Um, uh, In all fairness, I, ca- I can understand people that say the Doctor should always and forever be a white guy because, mm. like, you know, in the nicest possible way, because this is a character that routinely changes his face. Mm-hmm. The fact that this is such a radical change now, I mean, it's still a white character. It's just the gender that's different now, yeah. you know? I kind of got this weird, refreshing feeling whenever I saw the 12th Doctor regenerate. Hmm. I don't know if that's just something to do with, oh, finally, Stephen Moffat's out the door. But it was just whenever the regeneration took place and her first words were, oh, brilliant. And then the star just went, boom. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, drivers. Oh, dear. Here we go. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I got this sort of burst of energy from it again. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, wow, this is new. This is different. And even though it was just her on screen for a couple of seconds. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't know what the series is going to bring, but the, the trailer which we got at SDCC, or just before SDCC, I think, at San Diego Comic-Con, um, I really liked it. I, 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 I really like the feel of this, this, this actress, of Jodie, Jodie Wicker. Now, I got to yeah. be honest, I, I don't, I'm not really familiar with her work. Before this, no, I'm not either. If I'm being honest, yeah. Um, but you know, she, I love her Yorkshire accent. I think that's yeah. really cool. I like that. I think, and I'm glad that they kept it. Yeah, I like that the Doctor has accents now. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously, it started Every with Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, where uh, and then with Peter Capaldi, he kept a Scottish accent. Yeah. Whereas David Hinton, and now we've we've got Jodie Whittaker's accent. Yeah, and I love because I get that very little voice kind of. What do you call? I can't remember the, you know, the actress. It was a little voice. Uh, she was oh. in the Checkered Guide to the Galaxy and stuff. Um, I've blanked, but I get that sort of eye from her. Uh, she's Jane she, Harks. Jane Harks, yes. There we I've are. Got that kind of oh, eye from her. Oh, I am rusty. Yeah, no, I'm I the same. So It'll rusty. come back. It'll come back. Feel the brain just turn over there. And you know, I'm just going to say, it, she's really pretty. She is. She's yeah. really pretty. And it just, yeah, what I've seen, I like. I do like what I've seen of it so far. Yeah. See, I, th- I think the main sort of problem with Doctor Who is over the last couple of years, it's, it's had this sort of dark and dank and mm. depressing sort of uh, undertone to it. Yeah. The whole way through it, and especially with Peter Capaldi series, where you had things like the Cybermen taking over dead bodies and all, and it just it, it, it left you feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Whereas I preferred the the David Tennant and the Chris Frackleson years, where everything was the it was it was it was bright and it was bouncing. It was kind of like a sitcom in space almost, or like yeah. a soap opera in space, and and that was the best sort of way to reboot a show like Doctor Who that had this kind of stigma attached to it that oh it's a stuffy old show for old nerds. Yeah. This was a great way to sort of modernize it and. and get-